Thank you for tuning in to Investment Insight brought to you by McKay Wealth Advisory. My name is Hayden Prophet, and joining me today I have Brent McKay. Brent, a yeah. website, one of the websites we log into a lot, cnbc.com, and there's all these different market indices uh -huh. up there. There's the S&P 500, there's Dow Jones, there's NASDAQ, the Russell 2000, and as a new investor, I could see where that would be potentially overwhelming, and gets and the Dow Jones gets a lot of the attention, but what do you, what do we look at with each of those? So let's hit on what each one of those indices. So you is. really, if you break it down, most people look at really two, and it's very funny because they're the two that don't matter as much. So I've I've seen a lot of news media just report the Dow and the Nasdaq, which yeah. is very funny uh, because the Dow is only thirty companies, so the Dow is what's called sector weighted. So if we look at sector weighted, we say, hey, in the Dow, you've got Apple, IBM, Microsoft, Intel, and I'm probably missing one. They're saying those are the only companies that represent technology. And so the problem with that is, is you get a company like in 2023, which is NVIDIA, which has just had an incredible earnings, incredible story. Well, they're not in the Dow. And so if you look at most portfolios, they're not just in 30 companies anymore. You know, right. Back um, when the Dow was created and mutual funds were not that prevalent, the Dow was probably a better representation, but not really because there's more companies than in the total market. But it's a bigger number. It's a bigger swing. So the news media loves it because they can say, hey, the Dow was up 300 points today or the Dow was down 1,000 points today. Whereas if you say, hey, the S&P was up 40 points today, it's basically the same difference, but it's not as big of a number. Right. You know, just like um, recently a baseball player who shooting this video got a $700 million contract. But the thing they didn't tell you is he's actually only getting paid $2 million a year for the first 10 years. Yeah. And then his income comes later. So he really isn't getting $700 million because by the time he gets all his money, he's going to be dead and money's not going to be worth as much money. Right. And so he really didn't sign as big of a contract as you would think because of the present value of money. Then you have... Of course, the NASDAQ, which the NASDAQ, um, you know, it's about 2,500 companies. And what's weird about the NASDAQ is it is market weighted. So when we say market weighted, it means what's the company's actually worth. So when we say the Dow, it's a sector weighted. That means we say arbitrarily, let's say 20% is going to be, 20 is going to be technology. Well, then they're going to randomly divide that 20% up amongst those companies, you know, which is very arbitrary because it's not really based on valuation. Market weighted says, we're going to take the total number of shares, the total number of shares people can own, and the price, we're going to multiply those and we're going to get a number. So we're going to say, hey, Apple's worth $3 trillion, let's say. And we're going to say that company's going to have a bigger weighting because they're worth $3 trillion than some startup company that's worth $100, you know, $100 billion. Well, it wouldn't be a startup, it would be a pretty big company. And so, you know, those two real things. So, so the NASDAQ is mainly, and so, but the problem with the NASDAQ is over 50% of it's technology. The S&P, which is the one they don't like talking about, but is the better one to look at, is the 500 to 503 largest U.S. companies based on the market value. So they take the 500 companies based on the number of shares, based on the price, and they say, this company's worth $3 trillion. That company's worth $2 trillion. And they average it out based on math. They average it out based on numbers. And so the S&P tends to be a better reflection of someone's portfolio because most people's portfolio are in lower risk, larger companies. And so the S&P tends to be the one that's a one to look at. But if you look at what the media covers, they cover the Dow and they cover the NASDAQ. And that's not really a great representation of the broader market. Then you also have the Russell 2000, which you mentioned. The Russell 2000 tends to be the smaller U.S. companies, the ones that are growing, the ones for with cures for cancers, or maybe a company comes up with a solution for ransomware or something. Those are the companies that are really small that kind of take off. And so in a portfolio, you also have um, a lot of different investments in other countries. A lot, a lot of times people don't think about, you know, it's Nestle. Nestle is a Swiss company. It's not an American company. Yeah. Um, BP, British Petroleum. You know, it's a British company. Um, and so a lot of times you have investments in Europe and in Japan, you know, Nissan, Toyota. Those are companies people own, and they're not based in the United States. And they're not going to be in the S&P 500. Right. And so you also got to look at some of those broad things. But broadly speaking, if you look at 
the S&P, small U.S. companies, some of the bigger international markets, and you look at bonds, you pretty much have an idea where you're at. But most people don't look at the right things because they see the Dow and the NASDAQ, and yeah, the Dow does somehow randomly have an 80% correlation with the S&P. Right. But it's really not the S&P. And here's the crazy part, too. Every year, they remove companies from the Dow. So, like, people are like, well, the Dow's back up to where it was. Well, wait a minute. There might be six different companies in there that weren't in the original 30. So, that doesn't mean you actually recovered your money because it, it isn't something different. Yeah, if you move the goalpost, it doesn't mean you're a better kicker. It just means yeah. that you're now hitting the new goalpost, right? Well, and that's the thing that really makes it challenging. And so, and you always got to remember when we're looking at information and financial information, if it's free, there's probably an angle. Sure. Because nothing's free. And so a lot of times, a lot of the sources people use are not with the accurate. But if you, if you want to make it simple, the S&P is probably one of our favorite because it takes the 500, 503 largest U.S. companies, mm -hmm. takes actually what they're worth, what you could buy them for today. If you bought all the shares and you paid the price, this is what it would cost. Right. And it has a legitimate weighting based on that. Right. And, and so that's probably our, our favorite. But that's usually for most of our investors, about a third of the story. Mm -hmm. The other third plus is probably bonds or more. And then the other third is probably this international and small use companies. So really when you look at your portfolio, you've got to have a broader look than just the Dow if you want to be accurate. Right. Um, now, if you want to just own the S&P, which is a strategy some people use, you can do that. But remember, you're leaving out Nestle, you're leaving out British right. Petroleum, you're leaving out Toyota, you're leaving out a lot of companies right. that investors have made money in over the years. Yeah, you're going to get a component of your portfolio if you look at the S&P, but you're not going to get the whole, it's like cutting you know, three quarters of a pizza per se. You're going to get that much, but who knows what the last Correct. little bit was. Well, that's why it's very important when you're looking at assets to look at the broader picture because, um, you know, you have to pay, you know, it's, it's not simple. But, but if you wanted to be simple, if you knock it down to bonds yeah. and the S&P and small caps, you're probably going to get close. Sure. And so, but it's funny, um, CNBC or Market Watch or Bloomberg or Wall Street Journal, they really love that Dow as well as Fox News. It's and always CNN. the first thing you see. Yeah. And, you know, and so one of the best things, though, you can look at is a broader perspective. Yeah. Awesome. Well, anything else to add to the... No, other than just, you know, when you're thinking about educating yourself on investments, is always when you watch anything media related, try to remember that bad news sells better than good news. If, if there's not something bad going on, you go about your day and your life. If you're worried about something, you turn the TV on. And so... The news, news media companies are here to make money. Bad news triggers the use. Yes, that's a great quote. Bad news triggers the use. I like that, hey? And so that's something that um, when you're, you're, you're looking at it is just be careful because don't make investment decisions based on the news media. Make investment decisions based on you know, some of the concrete valuations where they sit and, and look at the bigger picture. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for tuning in today to Investment Insight, and I hope you have a great day. Awesome. Thanks.